Hi you guys, my name is Roberta Peel from Oregon Trail Silver. Uh, right now we're doing a challenge on Let's Make Jewelry, the Facebook group. And uh, the challenge is making beads. Okay. Um, I realize that the hardest part for some of you guys is going to be soldering your bead halves together. If you can see them. Really pretty little guys. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do a video really quick and show you how to go from the dapping block in your, into your sweat soldering. Alright, so when you very first pull out your bead half, your bead halves that you've made, um, you're going to find that the inside is actually going to be really sharp and it's not going to be perfectly flush. It's not very good for making good contact. So what I have here is a piece of, uh, of uh, should be 220 grit. This is 180 but it's worn down to 220. And I'll show you guys how I start this. Okay, so here's your sandpaper. Here's all I do. So I just push down on it, hold down the, soft, uh, the sandpaper with the other hand, and I just make a circle. Just kind of whisk it around back and forth. And you really want to make sure that you can see, just as in the pictures, the smaller they are, by the way, the harder that this is, I promise. Don't be afraid to give it some force. But you're going to go from having a really, really sharp edge when you do that to a nice, very flat top for good contact. Okay? So, now the next thing that you're going to want to do is you'll want to prep your halves. Okay? So, the way that we're going to prep our halves, you make sure you guys actually have a really good view of this because it's somewhat important. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll prep my halves, make sure that these do not touch while you're doing this. Um, I'm using Prips Flux. If you guys have never used Prips Flux, uh, it's really good in, <laughs> can't see it can you, it's really good in a spray bottle. So what I'll do is I'll start off by using my little butane torch and heating them up. And then you spray your Prips Flux on, make sure that it's pretty generous and then you continue to heat it up, okay? And that's how we're going to start off prepping, all right? So just as long as they aren't touching, you're good to go. And I always start heating from the side closest to me because the heat's going to travel that way. So I'm just going to heat it up a little bit until I see it starting. This is sterling, so I'll see it starting to oxidize pretty quickly. All right. And that one right there almost melted on me. Ha! So this is pretty thin, it doesn't take a whole lot of heat. Then you take your Prips Flux, and I am very, very, very generous with this stuff. I don't know how generous you're supposed to be, but, you know. And then I'm going to heat it up. Maintain your flame control or you're going to melt these things. You heat it up, you see how it turned white? And now it's going to turn either kind of a yellow or a clear on me. Prips tends to turn yellow, I've noticed. So as soon as it flashes past that white point, then you're good to go. Alright, so I actually grabbed two of these because I wanted to show you two different methods of getting your solder on there. Okay? Now the first one is mine, and I'm only going to use, because these aren't very big, I'm only going to probably use, um, and this is hard solder but I'm probably only going to use um, one piece of solder for each bead. So, this is how you guys are probably going to do it. And that's okay. Just put it in there. Try and get it as close to the edge as you possibly can. If that means tilting your bead down so that you can get the, get the solder in on there, it's totally fine. So it doesn't like get all screwy and slide off on you. Alright, so now I'm just going to reheat this one bead just this one until the solder flows. All right. So another good way of doing it is by using a pick to pick solder it. Now anytime you're pick soldering you always want to make sure that you've got flux on your pick, okay? Because that'll allow your, your solder to stick to it and it allows it to unstick to it. So I heat it up until my pick is red hot and then I just touch the solder. Okay. And then this is where flame control comes in, alright? I'll heat the pick and try not to heat the silver up too much, but the silver still needs to be warm enough to be able to catch it. 
so the flux is starting to get a little sticky. And then I just melt it again until it sticks. In fact, you know what? I don't think with these you can have, as long as your solder's on the inside, I don't think that you can actually have quite too much solder. So I'm actually going to do one on either side. So feel free to do it either way. And you notice I'm just trying to heat up my pick, not so much the solder. All right, so there's that. Now it's a good idea to let these air cool. Don't quench them, okay? Um, huh. This is one of those do as I say, not as I do moments. Actually, we need to flow those. So you really do, you want it to flow. And you notice how I back my torch off when I notice the metal is starting to get hot enough? That's called flame control, and that is very, very important when you're soldering. Now, the reason why you want these to flow is, number one, is you want to make sure that it's going to be where you need it to be. This is why sweat soldering is so important. So you want to make sure that your solder, I know you can't see this one, but you want to make sure that your solder is going to stay right here on the edges exactly where it needs to be to make contact with, this, with, this, with the half that doesn't have any solder on it. The other reason is if you don't flow your solder, then your beads are not going to set evenly on one another and they'll shift. Okay? So the next thing I'm going to do, and again, wait until they cool off. Don't do what I'm doing. But I've been making a crap load of these lately for a squash blossom necklace. Is I'll take the two halves with a T-pin and stick one half right into the other. It doesn't need to go very far into your charcoal block. Okay? And if you guys don't know what a T-pin is, this right here is a T-pin. These are found in craft stores, primarily used for sewing. Metalsmiths have taken over the sewing department. Don't worry, we're going to take over the world one day. Um, another really easy way to actually get these to... Um, yeah, if I can get this on there. Well, you're not wanting to go through there, are you? Every now and then... By now it should be cool. Yeah, I can touch it. Every now and then, if your hole's not quite big enough, and by the way, don't make your holes too big, you can take a bead reamer, stick it in there, and it'll clean it up a little bit for you. Okay. There we go. All right, so you see how I've got it sticking all the way up there? Well, it's easier to set it down inside of there by using cross locks. Let me move this right here where I can see it, or where you can see it. Stick it down and through that hole. So this bead right here doesn't get in the way, and then remove your cross locks. Now, here's the hard part. Believe it or not, that was easy. The hard part is getting these beads to line up. Sometimes that means, you know, twisting around on your T-pin. Other times, and by the way, don't touch your metal when it's pissed off at you. Other times it just means, you know, just touching the bottom of it so that it sits upright. Now what we're going to look for, because the solder is on the inside, and this is where a lot of people get confused. Anytime you're sweat soldering one piece to another, whether you're doing bead halves or you just want to do another, you know, one chunk of silver on top of another, like flat piece, it doesn't matter. Um, what you want to look for is you want to watch the edges. Be very, very careful. This is not very thick metal. This is 24 gauge. So be careful not to melt anything. Maintain your heat control. Don't forget to back your torch away, not too much, but not too little, but to back your torch away when you see the metal is, is almost getting to temp, you can tell by the color. And you'll watch me actually do this. Now how do you know that your solder is flown? You're going to see a flash of silver going across the edge. Okay, so right where the seam is, you'll see that silver just flash. That's really kind of cool to watch. Um, aside from that, just make sure you hold it off. And I always start by going around the charcoal brick. And as I'm doing this, you'll notice that I didn't bother with which piece was on top, whether the piece with the solder was on top or not, because it doesn't really matter. Okay, and right about now I'm starting to see it turn. And I haven't got my flash yet, so I'm just going to back it. There's my flash. And you want to make sure that it goes all the way around. You don't have to back your torch off an awful lot. Sometimes even just a little bit will do it. So you start around the charcoal bra the charcoal brick. So you can get that bottom piece heated up. And my torch is dying, I think. Okay, and now when I see it starting to turn pink, I'm just gonna 
kind of go in and out and back it up. Watch for that flash. There it goes. All the way around. And that's it. So that's how you get your bead soldered together. Now after that, you always want to let your silver sit for a second. Okay? Um, one of the reasons why I like doing the, um, the Prips Flux for these Number one is it's way easier than trying to brush on flux. Okay, brushing on flux is it's a pain in the butt for these little guys. These are really small compared to the sizes that I will be doing in the future. Um, and probably some of the sizes I hope you guys are starting with because the bigger ones are a little bit easier. So um, you always want to let your metal cool off a little bit. All right, before you quench. But the other reason why I don't particularly much care for using like candy flux or anything is because every now and then is handy flux will actually sink to the bottom and it'll stick to your charcoal and then it'll um, it'll plug the hole up so you can't just stick the pin in so that's one of the reasons why I've decided to like the Prips flux so there's one and here's the other okay and now we have two really ugly metal beads that just need to be pickled and we'll clean up the uh, clean up the edges using the Fordham. In fact, before I clean up the, or before I use the um, pickle, how about I give you guys a little bonus and just show you how I clean up the edges, okay? All right, so I'm, you know, you want to get your flux off. All right, this is just for educational purposes only. So let me really quick pull out my polishing wheels that I'm going to be using. One and two. So we're going to use three different polishing wheels to clean these up. The first one that we're going to want to use is going to be um, a coarse polishing wheel. And I like to have everything out of the way of my cord when I'm doing this. Alright, so the first one I'm going to use is a coarse polishing wheel. Let me turn this a little. Here we go. And I don't have designated mandrels, I just pop them out and pop them back in anytime I need them. So I'm going to start with the course. And this is how I get my polishing wheels on. This is what makes it so fast. So just zip it on. Okay. So first of all, you take your bead, you want to dip it in water. Okay, you want it wet because the friction will actually make it hot. And then all I'm going to do I'm going to see if I can zoom in at least enough to where you can see what I'm doing. All I'm going to do is zip along the edge. And remember, at this point, you want them to be pickled. Okay? So I'm going to zip around the edge until I see that seam is gone. And I'm not applying a lot of pressure. I'm not digging into it. I just want to file it down a little bit. Not a lot. I know that there's no seam there. I also can tell from this point, I can tell from this point that my solder has flown all the way around the bead. If it hasn't, no big deal, just reheat it and solder, solder it again. Well, not necessarily solder it again, but you can reheat it and the solder should flow. Next, we're going to switch to a medium wheel. No, I've never hurt myself doing that, not yet. I'm waiting for it. And I'll dip it in water again. Do the same thing. And what this is going to do is it's going to get the roughness out from the um, coarse polishing wheel. So you don't see all the marks. It takes some practice to do. And of course, if you don't have a flex shaft or if you don't have a Dremel, you can always uh, do this using you can always do this using a, um, a piece of sandpaper and just rub it on the sandpaper. All right, and then I'll switch over to my other polishing wheel. I suppose I should probably get designated mandrels, huh? 
Nope, it's laughing at me. <laughs> Out. You guys do know I have crazy kids, right? Okay. <laughs> Can't kick his butt. Okay, thank you. I appreciate the apology. Now, for this one right here, for the fine or for the fine polishing wheel, what you're gonna find is that it heats up much faster. <laughs> There's not a lot of grit in there. And for this one right here, I'm gonna go a little bit back and forth, kind of at a diagonal angle, because that's really gonna smooth out the edges. Okay, so now assuming that I'd already pickled it, I've got my edges all cleaned up. There's no soldering seam. This one's not completely perfect because I'm trying to get it to where you guys can see it. But um, assuming this right here is already pickled from here, remember really tiny holes, so none of my um, uh, none of my shots going to stick into it. If you're using a larger hole, it's a good idea to plug it up. Uh, sometimes a little piece of wax is, will work. Um, it's but you know, otherwise, if you use a, a hole that's large enough to accommodate your um, your shot, then your shot will get stuck in there. You'll never get it out. It's just going to be a it'll be a jingle bell instead of instead of a bead. Okay. But assuming this was already pickled, I would just pop it in the tumbler. Mine's really quick. Mine's like less than 10 minutes, and I get a bright, shiny finish. Depending on the tumbler that you have, you may have to leave them in there for longer. Um, but that is how you solder your beads together and clean up the edges. So I hope that this helps you guys. Um, our challenge for this particular one is going to be over at, let's see, we're taking entries the last week in February, okay, and that Friday is going to be the last day for the entry, that Saturday is when we're going to announce the winner, do our judging and announce the winner. So you guys have plenty of time to practice with these, um, you have plenty of time to, um, to work with them, to come up with a design. Uh, the challenge is not necessarily just for the prize, which in this case is one of the metal stamps that I make. But the challenge is definitely more um, to test your limits if you're new. Okay? If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to get a hold of us and ask. And until then, have a great day. Bye.